In Montreal in 1737, a generous and determined young woman of remarkable character set out to make her vision of serving the underprivileged a reality. Marguerite Duville, a powerful advocate for the poor, began the congregation known today as the Sisters of Charity or the Green Nuns. Early in life, Marguerite experienced the pain of loss and poverty. At age seven, she lost her father, the first in a series of the hardships that marked her life. Her strong faith never wavered. In the face of prejudice and persecution, Marguerite pursued her vision of universal charity. Marguerite was a strong woman and a creative thinker. She joined with three other women who shared her vision to improve the condition of the poor. The obstacles to their success were many. The general hospital was destroyed by fire twice. These first grade nuns were also challenged by personal illnesses, extreme poverty, conquest by the British, and opposition from civil and ecclesiastic authorities. Never did they abandon their mission of serving the poor. In 1855, the great nuns began their ministry in the United States. They were called to Toledo, Ohio, a swamp-infected area known as the Black Swamp. They made the difficult journey by stagecoach to care for those so desperately in need. Twelve years later, at the request of Father James Taffy, an Irish-American Dominican priest, five great nuns came from Montreal to Lawrence, Massachusetts. Sisters Marie Ann Brennan, Estelle Lancy, Ambrons Caron Turgeon, Anne Jane Moffat, and Marie Ann Bousquet began their ministry in the first charitable work in Lawrence established by Father Taffy. These beginnings resulted in a legacy of nearly 150 years of service to the city. These were years of frenetic growth in the region. The city of Lawrence was well situated to meet the needs of the growing industrial revolution. Although the mills provided a livelihood for many, others suffered from the poor working conditions and the hard circumstances of factory life. With the financial backing of mill officials and city residents, Father Taffy spearheaded construction of a facility on White Street to care for the needs of children and orphans. This facility, run by the original five gray nuns, was initially known as the Little Red House. This signaled the start of the long mission of service of the Protectory of Mary Immaculate. Over the next 25 years, more than 4,000 children called the Protectory home. In sheltering and caring for the children, the Grey Nuns drew inspiration from their foundress, St. Marguerite Uville. In the mid-1950s, the Grey Nuns always aware of the changing needs in their communities, recognized the shift in the needs of the people of Lawrence. In response, they directed their attention to the growing population of frail and sick elderly. In 1954, with the support of the Lawrence Community Chest and the late Cardinal Cushing, the Protectory was converted to a 121-bed nursing home. This facility provided the early roots for the MI Nursing Restorative Center, a 230-bed skilled nursing facility located today on Lawrence Street. For generations, the Grey Nuns had been models of compassion and instruments of social change. In 1968, at the centennial of the protective service to the city of Lawrence, records revealed that 7,002 orphans and 2,447 elders were cared for within its walls. In 1959, Pope John XXIII beatified Margaret Duville, calling her the mother of universal charity. 30 years later, Pope John Paul II canonized Marguerite. As a saint of the church, she was presented to the world as a model of compassionate love. In 1996, 
with trust in divine providence and faith in their lay collaborators, the Great Nuns transferred sponsorship of their healthcare ministries to Covenant Health Systems. As always, these risk-taking women look to the future to assure the growth of Catholic health care in the spirit of their beloved foundress. Over 150 years later, Marguerite's work continues through the mission of Mary Immaculate Healthcare Services. Her vision, when set to action, guides the daily care provided to all who come to MI. It is largely due to the great nun's guidance and love that the residents and staff have been able to weather modern day challenges such as the common fire in 1970 and the Mother's Day flood of 2006. After a presence of 142 years, April of 2010 marked the end of an era with the retirement and departure of Sister Teresa Russo and Sister Irene Harper. These sisters served MI in a variety of capacities earning the love and respect of residents and staff for over 30 years. The sisters now reside at Newville Place in Lexington, the home base for the congregation in the United States. Today, Mary Immaculate Healthcare Services provides a full continuum of care for frail elderly throughout the Merrimack Valley. The MI Nursing Restorative Center is home to 230 residents in need of 24-hour care for a variety of medical conditions. The Remarkable Recovery Unit, just recently opened at MI, offers short-term rehabilitation services. Physical, occupational, and speech therapies are provided, allowing the elders to return to independent living at home. MI Residential is an award-winning retirement community known for its friendliness comfort, and security. Residents enjoy the privacy of one and two bedroom apartments and can maintain their independence while knowing additional support is available should the need arise. Marguerite Tiles provides gracious and affordable assisted living apartments on the MI campus. Two adult day health programs, including the bilingual La Casa de Maria Immaculada offer solutions for families whose loved ones need daytime nursing and social support. All locations are supported by the chair car transportation services of MI Transportation. Over the decades, countless residents and staff members have benefited from the love and guidance of the Grey Nuns through their ministry at Mary Immaculate. They have set an unsurpassed standard for compassionate care that is woven into the fabric of daily life. The Great Nuns remain an inspiration to all those associated with Mary Immaculate. We have unanimously agreed, wishing sincerely, sincerely to, to leave, leave the, the world, world and, and to renounce everything that we possess, possess in, in order to consecrate ourselves to the service of the destitute, united only by the bonds of charity and of our own free will, have promised the following. We consecrate our time, our days, our work, indeed our lives, to provide for the poor.